Welcome back to the session on posthumanism. My name is Gerald Farker, professor for game studies and narrative design, and we will now continue with the question how did we become posthuman? To answer this question, Catherine Hales has listed four major differences between the posthuman condition and the liberal self of what we commonly believe to be human. They include, first of all, informational pattern over material instantiation. First, the posthuman view privileges informational pattern over material instantiation, so that embodiment in a biological substrate is seen as an accident of history rather than an inevitability of life. In this view, embodiment is not seen as something essential to life, but rather as an unnecessary hindrance that can or should be erased. Embodiment has been systematically downplayed or erased in the cybernetic construction of the posthuman. The body is understood as an object of control and mastery rather than as an intrinsic part of the self. The locus of the liberal humanist self lies in the mind, not the body. This chimes well with the belief that our world is composed of information that interweaves in complex patterns and structures and which is not tied to any instantiation. As Hales puts it, the universe is composed essentially of information. It makes sense that these creatures are life forms because they have the form of life, that is, an informational code. Information viewed as pattern and not tied to a particular instantiation is information free to travel across time and space. Hackers are not the only ones who believe that information wants to be free. Second, the post-human view considers consciousness regarded as the seat of human identity in the Western tradition long before Descartes thought he was a mind thinking, as an epiphenomenon, as an evolutionary upstart trying to claim that it is the whole show when it actually is only a minor sideshow. Third, the post-human view thinks of the body as the original processes we all learn to manipulate, so that extending or replacing the body with other processes becomes a continuation of a process that began before we were born. One of these is Deus Ex Human Revolution, in which protagonist Adam Jensen has undergone severe cybernetic enhancements that extend both his physical and cognitive abilities. This grants him, for example, resistance to anti-augmentation poisons, as he once demonstrated by resisting a toxin, which normally resulted in people's cybernetics being manipulated to kill them. Furthermore, there is the social enhancer, to analyze the behavior of conversation partners and providing psychological data. This creates a psychological profile based on facial expressions, body language and environmental cues. Adam has as well many hacking abilities to hack into various systems and electronics. And finally, he may use the InfoLink communications package, which allows the user to receive and transmit messages by using tight band microwave signals. Which brings us to the fourth and final point. Fourth and most importantly, by these and other means, the posthuman view configures human beings so that it can be seamlessly articulated with intelligent machines. In the posthuman, there are no essential differences or absolute demarcations between bodily existence and computer simulation, cybernetic mechanism and biological organism, robot theology and human goals. In conclusion, the post-human fundamentally changes our way to perceive humankind and what it means to be alive. It moves away from the concept of the liberal humanist subject and a conception of individuality towards a more open and inclusive way of perceiving life. Its possessive quality is found in its conception of the individual as essentially the proprietor of his own person or capacities, owing nothing to society for them. The human essence is freedom from the will of others, and freedom is a function of possession. The posthuman, on the other hand, does away with the natural self. It is 
an amalgam, a collection of heterogeneous components, a material informational entity whose boundaries undergo continuous construction and reconstruction. In this account, emergence replaces theology, reflexive epistemology replaces objectivism, distributed cognition replaces autonomous will, embodiment replaces a body seen as a support system for the mind, and a dynamic partnership between human and intelligent machines replaces the liberal humanist subject's manifest destiny to dominate and control nature. In this way, human functionality expands because the parameters of the cognitive system it inhabits expand as well. In this model, it is not a question of leaving the body behind, but rather of extending embodied awareness in highly specific local and material ways that would be impossible without electronic processes. Let us close the session with some further study questions. So, how does the concept of the posthuman alter or dissolve gender boundaries? What does the concept of the posthuman mean for human agency? Will we lose the right for self-determination and free will? And finally, is the posthuman the next logical step in human evolution and in the survival of the fittest? Thank you so much for your attention and have a great day. These are the references I used for the talk and also the figure sources.